from Washington to Beijing, from Moscow to the Persian Gulf, from Israel to the end of the earth, the nations are taking their positions in prophecy. The end time battle lines have been drawn. Jesus is coming for his church. Are you prepared to understand how ancient prophecies are dominating today's international headlines? Join the rapture with Faith Noble Adra, a gifted prophecy teacher. Now, here's today's message. I'm taking you to Luke 19, um, verse 11 to 14. The Bible says, And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, Therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his servants and delivered them ten pounds, and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Verse 14, But his citizens hated him, and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was giving his disciples, uh, and for that matter, as a kind of parable, uh, alluding to himself, as a man traveling to a far country, talking about his ascension to he heaven, and to return after receiving the kingdom which we have been praying for that his kingdom come his will be done on earth as it is in heaven and jesus christ spoke about two kinds of people with which this nobleman left instruction one his citizens and he was referring to the jewish people the rightful owners of the kingdom and then he was referring to another group of people whom he described as servants. When this nobleman was living, he called his servants. They were ten, and he gave each of them a pound each and told them to occupy till he comes. Hallelujah. And that is what I'm talking about today. And the parable, he actually picked it from um, uh, what, what was the normal practice at his time during the imperial Roman system when somebody is appointed to be a governor over any of the Roman provinces, what happens is that the person travels to Rome to receive what is called authority or sanction, or what we may refer to as accreditation. Uh, like when a regional minister or a DC is appointed, you know, they go to the castle to receive authority to rule. That is what Jesus is leading from. So Jesus left the world years, 2,000 years ago, and he called his servants. As for the Jewish people, he referred to them as the citizens Bible says in verse 14 that, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. But there was another category of people. When he was living, he called his, uh, what, servants. This nobleman called his servants. And those of us who are part of the body of Christ, we are in this picture, his servants. He called them and gave them a pound each and said, occupy, do business with it till I come. And I'm posing the question, what kind of things are we expected as a church to be doing till he comes? Jesus Christ has one responsibility or one commission that all of us, none of us is exempted from. And that is the issue of all men coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, 3 to 4 that this is good and pleases God our Savior. Who wants all men? There is only one thing that God wants every man on the face of the earth to achieve, to accomplish, to attain. And that is the issue of all men coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. God's desire may not be for all of you to be a billionaire, not for all of you to own a private car, private jet, not for everyone to travel abroad, but for everyone to be saved. And church, until this mission is accomplished, until he comes, we have no reason resting. As you can see, situations around the world are worsening. I'll be touching on um, major events around Israel, Iran, the U.S. A lot of things are working. Many of you will not get these things, but some of you have to get it. Hallelujah. I'll be touching on those things. So we have no reason resting. We have to occupy. We have to send the gospel of Jesus Christ. This time, it should all be about salvation and nothing else. Because that is what he has asked us to do. 
Bible says the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now He commanded. Note again, all men, not some men, all men everywhere. This is the capacity in which we are to occupy till He comes. William Booth, I like quoting this gentleman. He says something, and I quote: He's the founder of Salvation Army. He said, "While women weep as they do now, I will fight. While children go hungry as they do now, I will fight. While men go to prison, in and out." In and out as they do now, I will fight. While there is a drunkard left, while there is a poor lost girl upon the streets, while there remains one dark soul without the light of God, I will fight. I will fight to the very end. That is his word. Come concerning the great commission. Hallelujah. This is the only thing that all of us, if you notice uh, what Jesus said here, the man gave out 10 pounds. And the ten servants he called, he gave each of them had one. Each of us had something to do to occupy. The question is, are you occupying? Are you a minister? Are you occupying? The fire he will come. As for coming, he will come. And it will be a miserable day for many, many people. But I am sending you this warning. In the coming year, I know many of you are going to be making resolutions. The children, the spiritual toddlers, the spiritual infants are going to stand there on 31st and be crying for God to repair their car ties for them. But the matured ones will go there and ask God what, what, what you want them to do in his kingdom in the next year. Don't go there and be asking a stupid thing. Go there and make a meaningful request. Ask God what is there to be done. Yeah, that is what the matured ones are going to do. So when you go and you are making your resolutions, know what you... Jesus is saying, occupy till he comes. I want to let you look at a few things. The point is that is he coming? Occupation and his coming must move hand in hand. Is he coming? Do we have evidences that he's coming? Let me tell you, if you watch the international news, we have the issue. I've spoken to you on Ezekiel 38, 39. That issue is so vital and the climate is very right. I don't know. We, we are not conversant with Bible prophecy in our part of the world. But this is the major point of discussion across all prophecy circles around the world. You heard the Iranians threatening to close the Strait of Hormuz, uh, where one-fifth of the world's uh, crude oil that goes by tank passes through. The Iranians are threatening to close down that uh, sea route. And when that happens, what we are seeing as uh, fuel prices increasing will be worse. Global oil prices are going to escalate. And what is the problem? Uh, somewhere, about two months ago, the IAEA, that is the International Atomic Energy Agency, uh, still implicated Iran as having uh, undertaken tests that confirmed that it is working on a nuclear bomb. And you know what that means? I explained to you that the target of Iran's nuclear program is Israel, to wipe Israel off the map. And the EU have place a lot of sanctions on Iran and the Iranians are threatening that further sanctions will mean they will close down that street and a lot of Western oil comes from that region and uh, you know the implications and before the IEA released the report Israel's president Shimon Peres threatened to attack or embark on a preemptive strike and we've seen Israel do many of those things in Iraq and in Syria before but this one is a very sophisticated one and from what I understand from Ezekiel 38, 39, uh, Israel may not be able to do that preemptive strike. Even if it does it, it may not be successful. And that may lead to Ezekiel's prophecy. Russia leading a bunch of uh, Islamic nations uh, from beyond the Caspian Sea uh, uh, in the Middle East. The Turkey will be part, Libya will be part, what Iran will be a major pressure. And they will be heading towards the mountains of Israel. And as I speak to you now, the United States... Uh, and Israel are holding missile defense drill in Israel. Uh, they've not done that yet. They are preparing to hold that defense drill in preparation of any attack. It will affect everybody across the face of the earth. And the point is that the rapture, you can think about it now than ever before. Because the world will receive the shock of their lives. This is one of the prophecies that we cannot dispute. Uh, I'm going to show you more things about this. As I'm talking now, the United States is sending 7,000 uh of their personnel, military personnel, to help Israel uh, in preparation for a possible attack. As I speak to you, the U.S. is bringing its terminal high-altitude area defense shield and a ship-based uh, ballistic missile defense system to Israel for a possible interception. When Israel's president talked of preemptive strike on Iran, the first country to respond was Russia. 
and Russia's um, foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, said such an attack would lead to incalculable consequences for Israel. And from historical accounts, we know that Russia has been looking at Israel with some kind of eye. And what Ezekiel's prophecy said is just on course. Anything can happen. A global war. This war will be very serious because it's involving Russia. Russia has the highest number of nuclear arsenals in the world. Let me take you back to 1973. Israel had a war which became known as the Yom Kippur War. Russia armed the Arabs to attack Israel. And they really did that in 1973. Some of you might have known that. And I want to give you evidence that Russia has the capability, has the edge. As we are speaking now, Vladimir Putin is coming back to power. And he's the man who can have the ego to carry out such a military activity. And he's all confirming the war of Gog and Magog, spoken of about in the last days. The divine dimension of that war uh, put us as a church on the alert. Let me tell you this thing. 1973, when the Russians armed the Arabs to attack Israel, for the first week they were making gains. They were even heading to major Israeli cities. And Russia was lifting up arms to the Arab neighbors to attack Israel. And the U.S. also went back on arm lifting to Israel. And the war turned. Israel was pushing them back and was even heading towards Damascus. And look at what Russia's then Prime Minister, uh, Leonel Brezhnev, uh, said he sent a cable message to the u.s president richard nixon then and this is what he said this is what i want you to take note of he said and i quote force israel to accept an immediate ceasefire or the soviet union will take a direct action against israel unquote and then the u.s president replied saying we must view your suggestion a unilateral as a matter of gravest concern involving incalculable consequences unquote so that was almost a nuclear confrontation and the soviets realizing that the u.s is ready to stand by israel withdrew but not this time this time russia has only one ally in the middle is a major one that is iran of course and so it is ready to do anything and that tells us that time is running out of us many of you may not get this thing but some people get it that is why i'm talking about it hallelujah so as the world is on the brink of a nuclear war we have to be thinking as a church very fast we have to occupy because a time is coming the gospel will be evacuated from here we will not have the mandate to send the gospel again and some of you will be gnashing your teeth why didn't you occupy he is coming i'm giving you evidences to let you understand that you must occupy till he comes as we are speaking now russia has uh, 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 exported um, about 300 million worth of um, anti-ship missiles to syria and it's arming other uh, countries in the region for a possible attack on israel as we speak now i told you this thing when the arab uprising began that a change in regime in egypt may not favor israel israel has had a peaceful relation with um, egypt for some time now but now the islamic brotherhood is gaining grounds is making gains in the election it means israel will have a hostile neighbor as we speak hamas is on the gaza strip hezbollah is arming in lebanon and israel jerusalem is being surrounded the last days we are living in the very last days a major war now will be very deadly because it will involve nuclear powers. Let me tell you, what makes the Iranian issue the most dangerous of all times is that during the Cold War, the Americans were afraid for their lives because they know they have no paradise to go, dying in a nuclear holocaust. The Soviets also know that if this should come on, if there should be a nuclear confrontation, they have nothing to gain. But the war with Iran is the one that is being motivated by a theocratic regime, a religion. They believe they have all to gain in paradise. Who doesn't want 27 or 20 something virgins? Everybody want that. And that is a motivation. You die in that war, kill as many people as possible, and you get to paradise. The world is getting no safer. And the point is that a time will come. It will not be possible to be talking about, uh, it will become difficult. You cannot look at what is happening in Nigeria. So if they begin blowing up crusade grounds, who will go and evangelize? Jesus said, occupy till I come. He's coming, and then the case will be closed. Angels will be allowed to minister because the terrain will not be favorable. Now we have a very comfortable situation in Ghana here, and we don't care. Let me give you something. Um, I want to let you know more about this Iranian issue. 
when the Iranian president Ahmadinejad was elected mayor of Tehran in 2003, he made this statement, and that is why any attempt to negotiate with the Iranians will not be possible. As soon as they get the nuclear stuff, they will send the world to war. Hallelujah. This is what he said in 2003 when he was elected mayor of Tehran. He said, and I quote, Today, our nation's duty and prophetic mission is to prepare for the rule of the Mahdi. That is uh, the 12th Imam that they are expecting when he comes, he will establish an Islamic caliphate on earth. And on assumption of office in 2005, uh, Ahmadinejad told his senior advisors uh, that his mission was, and I quote, the establishment of a global Islamic government with the assistance of the Mahdi. Unquote. And his first cabinet meeting, he required all his ministers to pledge loyalty to the Mahdi and not to himself. And one of the motivations that is also motivating them is that Jerusalem is the target. It is written in their writings that they must get hold of Jerusalem in order to guarantee the return of the Mahdi. And that is what they are expecting. So nothing can stop them. I, I think in one of their hadiths, and some of you who know a little about Islam, you know about this thing. Uh, in one of the hadiths, they have this thing, and I quote, the hour of the end of days will not be established until you fight with the Jews, and a stone behind which a Jew will be hiding will say, oh Muslim, there is a Jew hiding behind me, come and kill him. You see, so all these things are motivating the Iranians. They are going to take the world to war. But Jesus said, when you begin seeing all these things, lift up your heads. Because your redemption is at hand. It is happening live. You may be in the corner here. You may not know how these things are close until the eventuality happens. We have much evidence today. The world is not as it was in the time of Hitler. We have more than nine nuclear powers in the world. So church, we are sleeping. We are doing business. We are, everything is just going on as normal. As normal. And we are not conscientizing the people to rise up to duty. And Jesus will come. Bible says, blessed is that servant whose master come and find him, occupy him. He will make him ruler over his possessions. Are there more indications that he's coming? I was listening to the BBC the other time. And they were talking about, um, uh, they, they were interviewing a group of people uh, who were planning uh, some kind of global fund to tackle more disasters which are being anticipated next year. And uh, a lot of predictions from insurers and meteorologists are indicating that a lot of natural disasters, more cosmic disturbances being predicted by the scientific community, uh, and this is dominating the brains of many people around the world. The Bible didn't say anything different. The Bible says in Luke 21 about the same cosmic disturbances. The Bible says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And that is a fact. Joel 2.30 I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be dark, turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord. Signs are everywhere. Everything is pointing to the, the same kind of situation in the last days. Hallelujah. The church is not getting any better. Can't you see that all is not well? Are you occupying? I was listening to a pastor who was narrating uh, what the Lord showed him about the rapture. He's from the Dominican Republic. And one of the things that he said, that saddened me. I have personally been a witness to many visions of the rapture. That is why I talk about it passionately. The Lord showed me those things more than 20 times. Are you getting what I'm saying? As these things are happening, all these things I'm telling you, what is the way forward? We are to look up to his coming. But the point is that, are we occupying? If you are not doing the homework, you, you cannot be comfortable about his coming. If you are a preacher, you are not doing what he has asked you to do. You cannot be comfortable when we are talking about news of his coming. He's going to come and he's going to punish all the bad preachers. Yeah, he's going to leave them behind. And this is what uh, this uh, Dominican uh, Republic uh, pastor said. He said at the rapture, what the Lord showed him is that the number is very few. The number at the rapture, very few. And that is the truth. It will be very few. How many of you are watching? And many prophetic visions coming indicate that a lot of pastors will be lynched by their members after the rapture. There will be great anger against the pastors. I'm telling you, take note of these things. The same congregation that is hailing you as you are preaching to them, the fan, now they will hate you. 
when Jesus leaves you behind. They don't understand why you are there and they will blame you for their plight. What are you going to do? We must speed up the soul winning. We must speed up our occupation. We must send the gospel now. That uh, situations are not completely out of hand. Are you getting it? Let me tell you, Jesus said, A night is coming when no man can work. John 9 4. I must work the work of him that sent me. Well, it is day. A night coming when no man can work. This is the reason why we are to occupy now till he comes. A time is coming. It will not be possible. It will not be that easy evangelizing. Sending the gospel to dangerous parts of the world. It will not be easy. It will not be possible. Ghana, we don't have a problem. At least we have a very tolerant community. And we live side by side. God has blessed us in that dimension. Why can't we send the gospel now? Why can't we do what we can do for Christ now? You see what Paul said. Paul said, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. And then he continued to say, for the time will come. When the atmosphere may not be conducive. As you see, security situation is worsening around the world. And guess what? Christianity is the target. The church is the target. A time will come. There will be global. There will be international laws. That will uh, ban evangelism. It will be seen as a form of intolerance. Yes. That will be the final solution. Let's outlaw all this kind of religious intimidation. When you try witnessing to somebody, you are showing a form of intolerance. Meanwhile, that is what Jesus has asked us to do. So a time is coming. Things will get many very, very complicated. I'm telling you. So church, we have the windows now. Let's stop wasting God's money. Let's stop wasting, putting God's money into useless ventures. Let us go for the loss. It is time we pastors begin to cut our spending and begin to push resources to those who are willing to take the gospel overboard and let them do it. I'm telling you, the day will come. You'll be shocked if Jesus leave you down. That, even, that bank, the money will be there. You cannot access it. Yeah, you have to receive the global identification system in order to assess all those money you are packing there. So as God's money is rotting there, and men are looking for ways to preach the gospel, but they cannot find it. I'm telling you, if the master return, you will be in trouble. And that is the opinion of God. You can take it or leave it. The Bible says in Proverbs 10.5 that he that gathereth in summer is a wise son. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Let me tell you, a time is coming, it will be difficult. As we speak now, the Lord has taken the evangelism himself. He's revealing himself to people around the world because the church, we are sleeping. Many great testimonies are coming up as to what God is doing in the Arab world. You know, it is hostile. You can't, the gospel is not that allowed there. But let me give you this interesting testimony. In Iran, the same place right now, God is doing a lot of things there. The government is trying to clamp down on the church and every bit of it. But look at what God is doing. The story is told recently of two missionaries uh, driving through the mountains of Iran, carrying Bibles in their boots. And they were actually smuggling it into the country. And guess what? They got to a point their brake began to jump. And then they slammed on the distance, uh, 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 on the brake, uh, uh, and then the car stopped. And an old man just came close to the car. And he was asking them, have you brought the books? And they asked him, what books? He said, um, some days ago, he had a vision of an angel. Who told him about Jesus? This is a purely uh, unchristian community. And he said he had a vision. An angel told him about Jesus. And when he woke up the next day, he realized that everybody else in the entire village had the same vision of the angel telling them about Jesus. And to become followers of Jesus as their lord and personal savior but they didn't know how to do it because there was no christian there this old man said the next day the lord appeared that very day the lord jesus appeared to him and told him to go down the mountain that two men will be coming with bibles and it will teach them how to become followers of jesus christ and that is why he was standing there and these missionaries were thinking they were going inside the country but look at it god is appearing to people he's saving them there is nobody who is living this world with an excuse that he didn't have knowledge of salvation in christ god is appearing to people there was a story of the same iran a woman was watching one of these jesus films on the international satellite system at night 
And then after watching the film, seeing all that Jesus is all about, the love of him, care for people, love for enemies and all those things, or those who are showing the movie made an invitation based on that scripture in Revelation that if you open the door of your heart for him, he will come in and dine with you. Do you know what the woman did? The woman thought they were talking about opening the door literally. So she got up and said, let me open this door quickly so that I can receive Jesus. As soon as he opened the door, there stood the man blazing in all kind of beauty, light coming out of him. And the woman was even blinded by the light. And the Lord took hold of her hand and told her everything about salvation, about himself. And she got saved. God is doing amazing. I can give you countless testimonies in Sudan, in Saudi Arabia, all parts of the world. Jesus is revealing himself to many people. You and I should be here and be making waste of this great opportunity we have. But I'm telling you, the master is coming. And it will be very, very uh, difficult for those servants whom he has asked to occupy. God is looking for men to occupy. What is your re- resolution for the coming year? Are we going to sit in the chapel as usual and be screaming, Yeah, bless me, prophesy to me, pray for me, perform miracles for me. You can still receive miracles and go to hell. Do you understand that? Yes, you can do it. You can do all those things and still go. I'm not saying those things are bad. But what kind of servants are we? We are to occupy. Look at it. The whole year, look at you. How many souls did you win? But you made business. You made profit on your business. What kind of a God will employ people and just be blessing them? Just, they will be withdrawing. What? No, is that how you work with your banks? You just go and be withdrawing. You don't deposit anything there. In the business places. The marketplaces, the schools, homes. God is looking for people. And I can assure you, God is raising men everywhere who occupy for him. Let's stop sitting here and be saying somebody should do it. Let's go and do it ourselves. Let's stop sitting here and be asking those who have not heard the gospel before, would they be saved? And let's rather be asking ourselves, those of us who have heard it and we are not sharing it with others, will we be saved? I want to tell you finally, from the battle zones of Afghanistan through the tension prone Korean Peninsula to the comfort zones of Ghana from the harsh desert storms of Saudi Arabia to the well watered grasslands of Australia from the radical strongholds of the Middle East to the moderate and the tolerant strongholds of other parts of the world the Lord Jesus is raising men and women for the end time harvest God is tired of complacent money testing religious church leaders who care only about their stomach fame and money from the jubilee fields of Ghana I'm talking about Western Ghana here to the Savannah Plains of the North. The Holy Ghost is recruiting an army. He's choosing the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and the complacent. And some of you are receiving those callings. Don't bother about how young or old you are, how uneducated you are. You are more than capable by the Spirit of God to occupy till He comes. I'm still saying it. From the coldest Orthodox churches to the most lukewarm charismatic circles, God is raising men to occupy. No complacency. If God has called you, you are not willing to take it. Be sure. He's going to call another person and the person is going to respond. Jesus is coming. He's going to find men who are faithful to him. What about you? Are you occupying till he comes? Or you are sleeping? If you are sleeping, the time the rapture will happen, you will wake up by force. I'm telling you, that is the opinion of God. I wish you all the best in the new year. And my prayer is that you occupy till he comes. God bless you for being part of me with on this program. God bless you. For any inquiries about the message you've just heard, you can call any of the following numbers. 0243-381-684 0279-935-868 or 0 one eight two eight two to get copies of these and other messages by the preacher call the same numbers don't forget the word of the apostle paul in first corinthians sixteen twenty two. if anyone does not love the lord jesus christ let him be anathema maranatha